Hi! Today I am going to show you how to tie the most basic knot for Nagoya Obi. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. I am still a little tired from last week's video that you should check out because it really made a lot of work. And I thought a cozy kitsuke video would be perfect for this week. And today I want to show you how to tie my favorite obi musubi, the otaiko. I have also mentioned this in last week's video, but I'm gonna say it again. There are two types of the otaiko, a formal otaiko and a casual otaiko. For the formal otaiko, you use a formal obi, a fukuro obi. And it's called niju taiko because you will have two layers on the back. And for the normal otaiko, you use a casual obi, a so-called nagoya obi, and it has just one layer on the back. If you want to know more about that, you should definitely check out my last week's video. I'm really sporting my video from last week. Don't I? <laughs> anyway, I want to show you how to tie the casual otaiko with a nagoya obi. So for this obi musubi, you need a nagoya obi and any shape is fine. I'm going to use a kyofukuro obi, which is some kind of a nagoya obi. And I'm going to show you how to prepare that for tying. A kyofukuro obi is an obi that you have to fold before tying. Start with folding one end in half. And fold this in length so it won't take up too much space. Continue this for over half of the obi. Leave the rest open. Usually Nagoya obi have an otaiko pattern to show you where to tie the otaiko. Mine looks like this. This is what I leave like it is and only pile it up, so the OB becomes quite compact. When you have the OB piled up next to you, you also have to prepare a OB makuna that will shape the OB and a OB age. This is some kind of long silk scarf that is used to cover up the OB makuna. Then you will also need a OB jime. Any kind of obijime is fine for this. This will hold up the obi shape. And you need a tie and a kimono clip. So let's get started. Fix a clip onto your left collar. Take the te, the folded part, and pass it from right to left on the back. Lay it on your left shoulder. Determine the length on the front. Usually the length to your obi eta should be fine. Start to wrap the obi from right to left, pull the end of the tail in place and wrap the obi over it. Hold the obi with your right hand. Your left hand holds again the end of the tail. Pull to tighten. Wrap the obi a second time. Hold it with the right hand. Loosen the clip and pull the tear out. Your left hand then holds again the end of the tear and pull to tighten the obi. Turn your right hand and lay the tare onto your right shoulder. Let the tear off your shoulder and bring it to the front where you hold it with the clip. Open up the tare on the back. And hold this up with the tie. Put the obi makura under the obi. 
You can use a mirror to make sure that the pattern will show up directly under the makura. Lift the makura over the knot we have created earlier and make sure it sits on it. To also make sure that it sits flat against your back. Tie the ties on the front and put them into the space behind the obieta. Cover the obi makura with the obi age. And tie the obi age on the front. Take the tie off. Align it with the lower edge of the obi around your waist. Transfer this line onto the tade that is hanging behind it. Roll the obi around the tie to create a fold. Hold the fold in the middle to lift the rest of the obi inside. Determine the length of the tadesaki that is peeking out. The length of your index finger should be fine, but when you're not sure, keep it shorter because you can easily pull it out later. Tie the tie on the front. Take off the clip and fold the tie back. Put your left hand into the otaiko, where the tie holds it up. Use the tie as a guide. Pass the tab with your right hand into the same space. You can again use the tie as a guide. Your left hand pulls the tab through. Let it peek out for about 4 cm on the left side. Pass the obijime through the otaiko as well. And make sure it lies on top of the tab that we have just passed through the otaiko. Tie the obijime and obiage on the front. I have two tutorials for this on my channel and I will link those videos down below. Take off the tie and clip. And straighten your kimono out. Make sure that the otaiko sits straight and the tadisake has the right length. And you're done! Believe it or not, the Otaiko Musubi is already 200 years old. In 1817, the Taikobashi, the round bridge in front of the Kamedo Tenjin was finished. And at that time, Fukugawa Geisha wanted to wear, or she actually wore her obi in the shape of a Taikobashi. That is why this obi Musubi is called Otaiko. I really hope you enjoyed this cozy kitsuke video. I know it's really hard to tie the otaiko on the back and get used to it. It feels always a little like yoga to me, don't you think? If you want to know how to tie a otaiko on the front, let me know below in the comments. If you have further requests about videos or questions, also let me know in the comments or message me on Instagram. I really would love to hear from you. If you're not subscribed yet, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more kimono content. Thank you so much for watching and I talk to you in my next video. Bye!